Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. So today I am doing another series review. So this series I started reading in the fall of last year and I just wrapped up the last book uh, either I think about two months ago and I really really enjoyed my time with this series and the series is the Books of the Rexera by Martha Wells. So I know Martha Wells is more well known for her Murderbot series. I've seen quite a bit about it in the past couple of years online um, and I've been meaning to get to it but I have never really seen anyone talk about the Books of Rexera. Um, these are one of her earlier works. I think she's been publishing since like the 90s or something. So these books started coming out in the early 2010s. I honestly have no idea how I stumbled across them, but when I saw the cover of the first book, I was like, yeah, I have to read that. Uh, flying people, floating islands, I'm in. And I ended up loving it. <laughs> so, the world that these books are in is a big part of why I love this series. So, there, it's a region called the Three Worlds. Um, you don't get a map or anything, which I think would have been helpful maybe, but also just knowing that there's lots of regions, um, it's a pretty expansive world in my opinion. So there are many different kinds of beings living in this world. So there are groundlings, and most of them are humanoid, but there are definitely some that aren't. Um, and then there are also sealings, so they live in the sea. And then there are flying creatures like the one on the cover, as well as like even higher flying, so like completely airborne 100% of the time. So there's just a huge range of creatures, um, and there are so many different groups, so many different cultures, so many different views on life and how people run their lives. There are so many different cultures within all these different species, and also when the different species come together and they form new cultures that way, it's explored throughout this this series, and it's that's one of my favorite parts. It's so cool to just see how all these different cultures are living in their own space but also together in the larger world. One of the most prominent species are called the fell and they are big shape-shifting flying creatures. So they have their flying creature form but then they also have the form of like a beautiful pale skinned human. So they will infiltrate cities in this beautiful form and then kind of take over and destroy the city and eat all the people that live in it. So they basically go around doing that and over time different regions of the three worlds have come to fear the fell. So that kind of sets a backdrop for the first book in the series, uh, The Cloud Roads. It is about Moon. He has been living basically by himself since he was young. His family was killed and he has basically been traveling around to community, to community since then. Uh, he keeps getting kicked out or leaving willingly once people find out his secret and his secret is that he can transform into a big flying being which most people mistake as a fell so they rightfully are afraid of the fell um, but Moon isn't a fell so he gets kind of that fear taken out on him and in the beginning of the first book he finds another person who is like him who can transform into a big flying creature. So he gets brought back to their community. He discovers that he is a Rexera as well as all of these other people at this colony. Um, within the Rexera there's a lot of variation. Uh, there's different groups of people. Some of them can transform into these big winged creatures. Others can transform into a different form but that doesn't have wings. And then they also have queens that always kind of have this like reptilian kind of look and some people can do magic, some people are um, delegated to being warriors based on what forms they can take. So there's a lot that Moon doesn't know about what it's like to be a Raxura. So he is just completely lost. He doesn't know how he fits in to this, if he even wants to stay. Uh, he finally found where he came from in a sense and he just feels so lost and alone still that he doesn't know if that's where he really wants to be even though these are basically his kin. So the book basically goes from there. I don't want to say too much else about the plot of the first book 
and I guess of the subsequent books because it, that relies on the plot of the first book. So that's the general setup of the first book. So Moon really is the main character. Uh, this follow this series is definitely following him, but there are some other characters that I really, really loved in this series. So one of them is Stone. He is the one who finds Moon while he's out in the world and brings him back to the Rexura colony. And I love Stone so much. Seeing him and Moon form a relationship is just, it's so good. And so Stone is a lion grandfather. So the currently ruling queen is a descendant of his. And he basically is a grumpy old Rexura. Because he is part of the ruling lineage of queens, he kind of has the privilege to pretty much do what he wants and he doesn't have to follow the strict customs of the Rexura. And I just love him. I love how grumpy he is also. <laughs> then there is Jade, who is a queen, though she's not the ruling queen. Um, she's, I guess, kind of like a princess, but they don't really use that word. And she and Moon have a relationship. And then there's Chine. Uh, he was previously one form of Rexura, and then one day he woke up and he was a different form, and that never happens. So he is really trying to find out how, trying to figure out how to be this new form of Rexura, uh, and what that means and why this happened to him. And he forms a friendship with Moon that I really enjoy. So I did also want to talk about the reading order for this series, because uh, I know for me it was definitely a little bit confusing. Just like looking on Goodreads and seeing that there were five books, but maybe short stories and like how they all fit together. So this series is basically broken up into a trilogy, then short stories, then a duology. So we have the trilogy here. Uh, it starts with The Cloud Roads. The second book is The Serpent Sea. And the third book is The Siren Depths. So these three books kind of... I wouldn't say they make a complete story. Each one kind of feels a little bit episodic. I would say that there is an overall theme in these three books, um, but each one kind of does follow its own plot, sort of. So those three books are then followed up by these two volumes of the stories of the Rexura. Both of these have, I think, five or six short stories and novellas in them, and I believe it tells you what you need to have read. Yeah, so some of them, like this one, The Forest Boy, it tells you a prequel to The Cloud Road, so it kind of tells you where it takes place within the series. All of these can be read as soon as you finish the first three books. Um, you can wait until longer, but there are some stories that kind of bridge the gap between the trilogy and the duology. And then the duology is The Edge of Worlds and Har The Harbors of the Sun. These two books form, I would say, one complete story. None of the other books really have a cliffhanger, like you read the book and that plot of that book gets resolved, but in these ones, the Edge of Worlds does have a cliffhanger, so you do need to read the next one in order to know what happens. Um, so it, it's more like one long adventure in these two books. And I would say one thing maybe that's important to point out going into this series is that if you want everything to have a clean, nice answer and resolution, uh, you're not going to get that with this series. I, I love the exploration of the world and I also love the characters and their relationships. So those kinds of things I feel like don't really need too much of a resolution, but if the, if there are things in the world that you find interesting that you're like, I really want an answer to this, you may or may not get it. And this is one of those series for me, I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but I give all of these books four stars, but I would still consider this one of my favorite series. Like, it feels like it is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, I just adore Moon. He has to deal with so much, like, inner hatred and just like self-loathing and like imposter syndrome basically and seeing him work through that it just like hurts but it's like so good to see that it's so good to just like go on that journey with him 
there's one point in the series where Moon is in a situation um, away from the rest of his colony and he he thinks like this is it this is just how I'm gonna live now because I can't get out of this situation um, and then when someone does come to get him out of that situation he like genuinely can't believe that they would put themselves in danger in order to get him out of that situation and uh, it breaks my heart a little bit but like just seeing him realize like I have found my people and I have found my family basically it just it's so good and that is pretty much all that I want to say about this series um a lot of it is really fun to be like going along and discovering new things about the world there's just so much about the world in these books definitely if you're looking for like cool fantasy species and cool fantasy worlds I would definitely recommend this one and if you want to follow along specifically the main character as he goes through this story I would also highly recommend it uh, I haven't read anything else by Martha Wells at this point but the Murderbot Diaries have been on my radar for a little while though I have heard such mixed reviews on them but I know there are definitely some other books by Martha Wells that I would like to check out as well, especially some of her earlier works. If you have tried this series or if you're planning on picking it up, please let me know because I would love to hear what you think. And that is it for me today. I'll see you all next time. Bye!